So if you've been following along with our videos, you'll know that we're currently back in the UK, so we've got to do our 10 days isolation, and we thought we would show you how we did our mandala here, but on the back doors of the van. And I always get questions, where do you get a stencil from? And well, this isn't a stencil, I just drew it by hand, but I've got a few tips on how to draw them really perfectly, so I will show you in this video. So before we start with the actual drawing of the mandala we just need to touch up the doors because they have a few scratches because when it's raining or really windy sometimes we just reach down to the garage area and pull up the gas canisters to save us from going outside so there's a few scratches we'll do those and make sure the screws are tightened um, and it was painted with a like a matte emulsion which I realise now is a bad idea because it's really not waterproof and if we do need to quickly open the doors um, it's just not ideal really so now we're going to use this satin one which should be a bit more wipeable and if there is a scratch we can just wipe it off and at some point i will redo all of the walls inside with this but for now we'll just focus on the back doors <laughs> you see my grandfather was a painter decorator so i've got it in my blood you know the whole paint pouring thing Would your grandfather recommend doing it in the inside on the bed? Yeah, he would actually. <laughs> So now that the white doors are painted and ready to go, um, we're gonna kind of map out how we're gonna draw our mandala. And the one that I did on the cupboards over there, I made it up completely as I went along, but I feel like I should probably be a bit more organized on this one because it's a bit bigger. And I'm being filmed for this, so a bit more under pressure. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to get a perfect mandala. So let's start with this, and we're gonna start with a square piece of paper. The reason why you should practice on a square or the reason why I usually practice on a square is because if you fold it into diagonals like this you can find the exact centre which is obviously the main part of the mandala. So Jake will do a bit more of a view and then I'll show you kind of how to draw one. So I don't usually make the design first but I am going to do that today because it's quite a big area and also it's a bit more complicated because we've got this kind of gap in the middle um, which means I'm going to have to yeah pretend that that gap's not there basically so yeah gonna map it out a little bit not perfectly just a little tiny sketch and then i'll get started so the reason it's good on square paper because you can get an exact center point now if you've got squared paper even easier because you won't need to do this measuring part you can just count the squares but i'm going to do two centimeters like i've done here that's two centimeters that's two centimeters i'm going to do the same on here it doesn't you don't have to be two centimeters but it's just because the size of this piece of paper it would kind of make sense and then what I'm going to do is find a little point on this line. Say so I'm going to do this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. Just eyeball it. And then if you want it to kind of oh, in a bit, if you want it to be kind of a flower, you can start sort of sketching out sort of a flower sort of shape. So do some petals. I always start with petals because I am used to drawing them, and they usually turn out okay. They don't have to be completely even, but you get the idea. So you can kind of start off by doing a kind of flower. Now that you've got your centerpiece, and remember that mandalas start at the centre and work their way out, you can do any design you want. Um, I just, for some reason, start with a flower, but I forgot to do the circle in the middle. So right now I'm going to draw a little circle in the middle to kind of make it an obvious centre. And I keep drawing petals and some more like sharp angles, like triangles going out. And the mixture of all those together should look quite nice, but you can do any shapes you want. So when I said about the triangles, um, you can do things like because it doesn't all have to if you want it to be more geometric this is just to show you what it could be like if you wanted a more geometric one you could do something like always use points that you've already got that keeps it even so i'm just going to go from these points to kind of make different triangle shapes and you get the general gist and then you could measure somewhere out here and do sort of more of those shapes. And then you can fill in all of the small details, which could be anything from like smaller lines or even dots coming up like this. Some people do those little ones, but you can do anything and make it as big as you can and put as many details in as you can. So that's it, really. 
once you've made a design you can start painting obviously but I'm probably just going to go for it now because um, why not? It's not your first mandala. <laughs> no, I'm not my first mandala so let's go for it um, because it's such a big area this is Jake's idea actually because I haven't done one this big um, Jake's idea was to use this piece of string to kind of like map out the semicircle. It's going to be a semicircle from here basically. So we're going to hold that there, draw a pencil line in a big semicircle, um, and that should make it quite even. So, because we're doing like a half mandala, what we've done is um, just move the mattress back a little bit and put the pencil on the base of the bed and just kind of draw a line right across to get the, just so it's all coming from the same level. And we did it from the base of the bed so that it looks like. So look, yeah, continues. so we kind of want it to look like a horizon, our wild horizon. <laughs> it's just coming out of the, coming out of the bed. So for the first like kind of semicircle is going to come off. I've measured this way and this way, and now I'm going to measure up so I can get like the top point, and then maybe I'll just freehand it down. Maybe I'll measure somewhere again. So just sketching. Is that like a half circle? Yes, it does. So Jake has left me alone. He is cooking me a delicious curry. Um, and I'm working away. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch it out really light. Um, because I painted these doors with satin paint, it's really easy to use a rubber and rub, it, rub out anything I've done wrong. So I'm just going to do it really lightly with a pencil and then hopefully the paint is dark enough I can paint over the pencil. I don't want it to be too dark but I also want to cover the pencil so we'll see what happens when we get to that point but at the moment I'll just sketch it out basically. So I don't know if you can see that, I'm trying to draw really lightly, as lightly as I can, but basically what I'm doing is I'm using this to measure out the different sections and to make sure that I've got my main circle and the halfway point there and the same on the other side, main circle and the halfway point there. I'm just going to work my way up from those and keep measuring up like that as I go along. So I've finished sketching it all out now, that took, that's probably, that was probably the longest process of the whole thing. I think it should be quite quick. So now I'm, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna paint over everything I've sketched, but basically um, this color is what we've chosen, yellow okra, which um, it's a bit darker than yellow, which hopefully should cover the pencil, which should make it a lot quicker and easier. So let's see how it goes. happy with it at all when I did all the outline and I like I painted all the outline I just thought it looked really rubbish and I got upset and I almost cried but I've been shading it in so just to make it look a bit more like finished I guess so I've been putting like a little bit of paint on the paintbrush on one side and then dabbing it in some water and then kind of going along the lines that I've done like this and then just fading them out, like fading them down. So it's kind of like a gradient kind of effect and then it kind of fill, it's kind of filling in some of the uh, blank spaces which I didn't really like, so. Concentration mouth. <laughs> so I've just finished, this is the finished result. I'm not 100% sure whether I'm happy about it so I'm gonna go to sleep tonight, wake up in the morning, have another look to see if I like it. Um, but it's really quite easy actually, like all you need to do is measure things out, plan it, um, sketch it out first and I think anyone can do it to be honest, you don't need to be like good at drawing or anything. Um, but it's a bit dark now so what we'll do is we'll come back tomorrow morning when it's a bit lighter and show you with the doors open so you can see what it looks like.
So there is the finished or mostly finished product. Mm. What do you think after doing it? I mean, it's not my best work, definitely. I'm not 100% happy with it, but it's okay. And it gave me something to do for a couple of days during... I, I think it looks lovely, but yes, it did give you, it, occupy you for two days of yeah, isolation. Yeah, of isolation. And I think at some point I'll probably paint over it and do another one. Maybe like a, a smaller one in the middle as like more of just a little, little picture rather than the whole door. But anyway... What that don't you that. like about it that, you, that someone else could prevent happening to them? I don't really like the colour. I think I could have done it. I think a more neutral colour would have been nicer. And maybe I should have actually drawn it out beforehand. Like she <laughs> told you, <laughs> like I told her. If I got bored of des like designing and I just wanted to go for it on the big door and yeah. uh, that didn't work in my favour. But yeah, so basically today is our last day of isolation or yesterday was our last yesterday day? Yesterday was our last day, but of course we had the test day eight test a day late it's a day late, late a day late results come in so yeah so we're supposed, you're supposed to basically if you don't know when you come back to the uk from abroad at the moment you need to have two tests it costs us 170 pound each you have to have one on day two and day eight and our day eight one came on day nine which means we're still waiting for the results um mm. but then the next two weeks jake's gonna stay here and um hang out with his family i'm gonna take the van down um three hours away to my family and hang out with them for a couple of weeks but we've still got some videos coming for you on Sundays, mm. even though we won't be in the same place. Yeah. So stay tuned for those. And obviously, if you like this, if it helped you, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, tell Beth it looks great. <laughs> and uh, yeah. We and we'll will, see you next week. We'll see you next week. Mm.